uh, Abdukarim Jalo, who is to come next, um, just to request from our audience, those uh, watching online, that we would need some few more minutes um, just to uh, deal with the last one, uh, Dr. Karim Jalo, which is system integration and infrastructure um, to be handled by Dr. Karim Jalo. Dr. Jalo, please, um, you're welcome on board. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Mr. Job. Thank you to all the previous speakers. I know we are running out of time, so I'm going to be very brief in my, <clears throat> in my intervention and leave the rest to questions probably. Um, in the Gambia, um, as almost all the speakers did mention, um, we have a lot of individual systems or applications um, that are implemented in different um, agencies or different departments. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say this is a bad thing because obviously, the different agencies have different processes, different data needs, um, different standards of operations. Now, obviously, the applications and the systems that they should use would, would be different. The development platform of these systems would be different. For example, the um, um, operating systems, the programming languages that are used, the data formats and structures would be different just because the different agencies are different. That is an obvious fact. So as a result, the different agencies will definitely use different systems and different applications. But what is important is to integrate these systems, even though they are running on different applications, um, different operating systems and different data formats, we need to be thinking about how do we integrate the systems? And currently what we have is that lack of integration, um, for example, in our country. Another area that we need to look at for efficiency or for implementation of all these different applications that have been mentioned here is to think about the infrastructure. And again, a lot of the speakers have to touched on this. But for example, um, um, Dr. Sifo Sise was mentioning the broadband infrastructure, the internet infrastructure that we have. Now you can build all these applications, brilliant applications, but how would you be able to integrate these applications and how will you be able to replicate these applications across the country? How can you propagate them across the country um, without a very good infrastructure? Obviously what we have right now, for example, if you talk to the ACE consortium, they will tell you that the ACE um, broadband cable provides for enough capacity for consumer need in the country. But obviously we do see um, internet fluctuations and internet problems that we have um, in our country. So that is a problem. How do we um, focus on our infrastructure? Because without very good stable, without very good quality infrastructure, then obviously most of these systems would, 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 it would be difficult to integrate the systems to share information, to exchange information, because you would need the connectivity, especially if you are talking about these systems to be integrated outside of their um, individual organizations. So for example, for some of you, I'm not sure how many of you have looked at the, um, the e-government e strategy of the Gambia. Most of the things that we are talking about here are really specified in the strategy. For example, e-payment systems, um, e-health, you know, um, data, digital data records keeping, and so forth. Most of these things are really specified in our strategy. So the problem is not what we need to do or what are the different types of systems that we need to digitize the country. This is well spelled out in a very well documented strategy. But then the problem that we have now is how do we move from that document to implementation. Now we have these individual systems. For example, if you look at the spatial data infrastructure or information systems, which will look at geographic related data. There are land management systems, for example, if you go to the land um, department or the Ministry of Lands, there are cadastral mapping systems that are used. But for me, the integration is how do we integrate those systems, for example, with the different agencies that require the data from those different types of systems. 
If you talk to the Ministry of Health, for example, they will tell you that they have what they call an e-health system, which has laboratory information system. It has national AIDS information system, disease surveillance system, and of course, district health information system. Okay, in fact, I am sure I know that the district health information system is developed by um, the University of Oslo, which is used to integrate data, health-related data from um, district level. But then how do we now integrate these to, for example, decision-making systems in the government to be able to understand what is going on at the health, health ministry level? Now, if you look at, for example, in financial management system, for example, the public service management system, most of you or people may know that there is what you call the IFMIS, right? The Integrated Financial Management System, which is used between the Accountant General's Department, uh, Ministry of Finance, Central Bank, and the like, right? And it is also used in so many agencies in the country and even in some of the embassies, right? But then if you want to expand this, how is this integrated across all the government agencies? For example, the GRA. We know that the GRA has recently, for example, implemented a secure wall to be responsible for taxation in the country. My question would be, for example, is this system integrated with IFMIS to provide better financial public finance information management system? If you go, for example, to the police, we have what you call a police visitor system and also police list, um, human resource management system. But is this also integrated with other government agencies or the outside entities that would require information from these? So the problem is how do we integrate this? And Beran also talked about, for example, lack of framework to, to help plug into the payment um, payment switch. And this is very important. Framework is the key word. We tend to implement systems without actually having any guideline, without having any framework that is going to guide us how to integrate the different systems. And without that, then we'll be implementing these individual systems. And then of course, we will then be having the bottleneck of integrating the systems. And that brings us back to square one. And then the second thing is, what is gonna be the infrastructure that these systems are going to run on? With the current internet um, infrastructure that we have, it is going to be very difficult to implement these systems and integrate them, number one. And again, do we need to think about, for example, the opportunity or the possibility of utilizing the cloud infrastructure to help us to mitigate against some of the constraints that we have? um on 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 storage on 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 implementation of the systems another thing also is there is a lot talk about the government data center which is a great thing but for me my question is are we really talking about one government data center that is going to be able to house all the different agencies data sets which are running on different data formats this different data structures for me that is not really a good way to go about things. I, I'm not sure if there is any country in the world that will tell you that we have one central data center. The key is to be able to integrate these things using technologies or tools like APIs or web services. Otherwise, we're just gonna fall back to this problem of integration. So I will end there with my um, intervention and listen to questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Abu Karim Jalo. Um, because of we are running in time, I'll quickly go to the questions. Well, you talked about the different data, um, availability of data in different departments. You talked about the police, the GRA, the health system, the IFMIS, which is from the Minister of Foreign Finance, and all these things are standalone. They have not been integrated. So the question is now, how do you build a system to integrate all these data across the board that would be able to serve different purposes using different platforms. And one of the key challenges that you've identified is the framework and the infrastructure that we'll have in place to make sure that all these things are integrated. Thank you for the insightful discussion. Uh, the quick question, just because we are running out of time, what skills or experience are required in system integration? Uh, if, if these skills are available in Gambia, what can be done to prepare um, the integration of different data centers that you've just mentioned in your discussions are available uh, in the Gambia. Thank you. 
thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Joe. Very good question. Um, there are several skills that are necessary for integration, um, information or data or application integration. One, the key is to be able to have skills in um, design of architectures because the architectures are going to be the frameworks. They are going to be the, the foundation. Without a very good um, architecture, um, people will be developing systems. For example, in the Gambia, there are systems that are developed locally, and there are, of course, systems that are developed outside of the country. So you need to have skills that will help in design of frameworks, architectures that will specify how, what, 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 what are the different processes that are needed, what are the different data that would be required for these processes? What would be the different applications that we plug in? And what would be the different um, uh, um, um, infrastructure or technology that would be needed to, to, to host those applications? So you will need skills to be able to specify those architectures so that any particular software developer who is going to implement systems in, in government, for example, will be able to utilize that framework, those architectures, and understand exactly if I develop this system, okay, for example, as Beren was saying, this is how I need to incorporate or embed the integration or the plug-in into, for example, the payment switch, right? If I'm going to develop a system, for example, for GRA, this is how I should incorporate the integration to the IFMI system, for example, right? So that is a very important skill that would need to be built. Another is how do we actually plug these? How do we create interfaces between these applications or between these systems? Number one, I mean, I hear again, people say we need a data center, for example, to integrate all these systems. That wouldn't work because again, the different applications and systems are having different data formats, data structures, right? So what we would need in terms of skills is how do we utilize, how do we develop interfaces so that different applications can plug in to each other? For example, how do we develop skills in APIs, application programming interfaces, right? That can be used to connect these different applications. Two, we need to understand or, or, or develop skills in the area of web services, right? And that will, of course, mean that we need to think about service-oriented computing in terms of developing our architectures so that different software developers or engineers, when they are developing these tools or applications, they will be able to embed web services, for example, so that the different applications, different systems uh, can be able to utilize different web services to be able to send in or make requests and pull data from different, different, different ends. So I think those would be very important skills. One last skills that would be needed um, in integration would be ETL, for example, right? Um, extraction, transformation, and loading. How do we extract data, for example, from one system, transform that, and then load it to another system that would require that data, okay? So those are very important skills that we need to nurture and develop to help in terms of developing um, integrated systems. And another thing in terms of infrastructure is, of course, how we need to develop skills in the area of um, networking and Beran, this is this is her area we need to be able to know how to really develop um, resilient networks right we also need to develop clouds you know um, cloud skills for example how do we develop cloud-based um, infrastructure so that we can be able to host these things for example amazon web services right to help in this area thank you Thank you very much, um, Dr. Abdul Karim Jalo, for that wonderful explanation of um, system integration and infrastructure.